we are searching now for the neurophysiological basis of such pattern discrimination. The toad's brain consists of the telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, cerebellum, and myelencephalon. Retina and optic nerve represent, embryonically, a protuberance of the diencephalon. In the retina, an area of receptor cells via interneurons is connected to a ganglion cell. The region of the visual field it corresponds to is called receptive field. This is the receptive field of a ganglion cell whose axon, traveling in the optic nerve, contacts neurons in the optic tectum of the contralateral midbrain or neurons of the pretectal thalamus of the contralateral diencephalon respectively. Amphibians have a total optic chiasm. When an object is moved through the receptive field of such a neuron, its impulse response can be recorded by means of a microelectrode made audible and visualized on an oscilloscope. By means of a perimetric apparatus, visual stimulus patterns corresponding to the behavioral experiments can be moved on a belt in different directions through a neuron's receptive field. During the recordings, the toad is anaesthetized and pharmacologically immobilized. First recordings from a neuron of the optic tectum. To a worm-like moving stripe, the neuron fires with high impulse frequency. The same stripe in anti-worm configuration remains practically unresponded. The worm preference is independent of the direction of movement. For comparison, recordings from a neuron of the pretectal thalamus displaying opposite response property. This neuron actually shows an anti-worm preference. Many types of neurons have been investigated. What function may they fulfill for the release behavior? A working hypothesis suggests that visual information pre-filtered by retinal neurons is transmitted via the optic nerve to neurons of the midbrain and simultaneously to neurons of the diencephalon. Certain neuronal systems, T51, in the optic tectum evaluate from the area of a moving object, preferably its extension parallel to the direction of movement. Conversely, other TH3 in the thalamus evaluate from the area of the object, predominantly its extension perpendicular to the direction of movement. For different directions of movement, these correlations remain unaltered. The hypothesis suggests that tectal neurons of a type T52 receive excitatory influences from T51 neurons and simultaneously inhibitory influences from TH3 neurons. If TH3 is not activated and T52 thus not inhibited, prey catching can be released. Other thalamic neuron types, TH4, receive both excitatory influences from TH3 and T51 neurons. This facilitatory interaction determines predator features and releases escape behavior. In our model, the neuronal systems can display the following states. Not activated, weakly, strongly activated, or inhibited.
The worm-like moving stripe excites T5-1 neurons strongly and Th3 neurons weakly. This causes no inhibition of T5-2 and only weak excitation of Th4 so that prey catching is elicited while the threshold for escape is not reached. If a stripe is moved in anti-worm configuration, then Th3 neurons are strongly and T5-1 weakly excited. Consequently, T5-2 is inhibited so that prey catching cannot be elicited. The weak excitation in Th4 is not sufficient to activate escape. A large moving square activates T5-1 and Th3 neurons relatively strongly. T5-2 neurons cannot be activated due to the inhibitory influence of Th3. The Th4 neurons, however, are excited strongly by T5-1 and Th3 so that escape is elicited. Such neuronal circuits in connection with each eye are established in each brain hemisphere. They are influenced by systems responsible for motivation, which, however, are not considered in this model. There is a method that allows one to check whether visual stimulus patterns evoke different neural activity patterns in the toad's brain according to the hypothesis. If carbon-14 labeled 2-deoxyglucose is applied to the animals, active neurons confuse this radioactive substance with glucose but cannot decompose it. The more active neurons are, the greater the stored radioactivity is. This is the autoradiographic image of a histological transverse section through a diencephalic mesencephalic brain region of a toad whose left eye was stimulated for a while with an anti-worm stripe. Regarding the radioactivity, the neural activity was somewhat higher in the right brain hemisphere, but a differentiation between optic tectum and pretectal thalamus can be hardly detected. With the aid of a computer, the autoradiographic image can be analyzed stepwise and color coded. In the code chosen here, the radioactivity increases in the direction of warm colors. According to the hypothesis, during presentation of the anti-worm stimulus, the pretectal thalamus is clearly stronger activated than the tectum. Another toad was stimulated binocularly with a large predator dummy. Correspondingly, both brain hemispheres are activated, the tectum strongly and the various structures of the pretectal thalamus very strongly. Here, the comparable level of a brain section from a toad whose binocular vision field was repetitively traversed by a worm-like prey dummy. Fading the successive brain sections rostrocaudally, it is obvious that the bilateral areas of the tectum, which correspond to the snapping region in the visual field, are activated very strongly. Back to the model. 